Hi friends, Allison here with The Everyday Scrapbooker. Thank you so much for joining me again today. I have another die cut layout to share with you that was designed and created in Design Space with the Cricut. And the theme of this layout is bug centered. As I was creating this layout, I had the phrase snug as a bug in a rug stuck in my head. <laughs> And I ran with it and designed an entire layout around this theme. It's about my dog, Mr. Freddy, who loves to snuggle up in mom's lap anytime she is not moving. <laughs> and I thought it worked perfectly to tell this story. So I began by cutting out a bunch of leaves. And they're going to be laid underneath the two pictures of Freddy that you see on the layout base already. I'm just figuring out how I want to arrange them. I'll stick the pictures down and then go ahead and started hearing the leaves. And then I realized afterwards, duh, that there were a couple taller, bigger leaves that I'd wanted to adhere behind these green leaves. So I kind of have to pull everything back up again to make room for the other leaves, you're gonna see them in just a moment. But if you look to the left-hand side of the screen, there's blue and white leaves. Those are going to be going behind the green leaves. I pulled them out right now. There's going to be a banner at the top of the layout as well, and that's where Snug as a Bug in a Rug comes in. I'm gonna save that banner for the last and actually stamp Snug as a Bug on it uh, there wasn't enough room to add snug as a bug in a rug so I'm just gonna leave it at snug as a bug and it still works it still fits the theme so like I said I'm pulling up the leaves that I had already just adhered <laughs> and uh, tucking in the other leaves what I just did was because there was already adhesive on the green leaves I didn't bother putting adhesive on the other leaves right away I placed them where I wanted where I wanted them, I put the green leaves back down so it was stuck back to the layout base and then I just added glue to the portions of the leaves that weren't adhered. Um, and now that I have that done, I'm going to go ahead and add flowers. I'm creating a garden, quote unquote, for my little bugs to roam around in. I have these bunches of red and blue flowers. They're gonna go on either side of the pictures. And then I have a third set of red flowers that are going to go at the bottom of the layout as well. But you'll see that a little bit later on. I'll be adding some journaling to the side of it as well. And then I'll put the flowers down and then add some more bugs to that little cluster at the bottom of the page. So right now I'm just adhering the flowers. I adhered all the tiny little pieces that were supposed to go together before I started filming this video just to save on time and just so that I don't lose anything. I've gotten into the habit of when I die cut my images, if there's lots of little pieces that go with them, I stop my cutting like when the cutting is done, put them all together and then if I have more cutting to do beyond that then I go ahead and do the rest of that as well but I make sure I put everything together rather than waiting until the end so I don't lose pieces because I have lost pieces and then I have to go back and cut them again and it's a nuisance and I'm trying to avoid that from happening and so that's my little tip for the day. <clears throat> I was going to use <coughs> Excuse me. I was going to use my little tip for adhering titles like I'm doing just right now with the flowers, but I actually just went out on a limb and did it on my own and it worked out really well. I wanted to make sure the placement was absolutely perfect, but really it didn't need to be perfect at all because no garden is perfect. <laughs> Nothing is always not always when you're planting a garden garden of course you want your rose straight and stuff like that but as far as wildflowers goes and stuff like that there's no rhyme or reason to where or how they grow so I just left it the way it was I have the title adhered I'm going to add those super cute little ladybugs it's actually called love bug on Cricut but I just thought they're so adorable with the hearts that I decided to use them on this layout so there is um 
four of them, I believe, that I'm going to be gluing to the layout. I use foam squares to add a little bit of dimension to them as well. And there's those cute little worms that I cut out too. One is going to go right where I'm putting it to the right hand side of the layout. And the other little guy is going to go down at the bottom when I have the journaling done. So that brings me to the journaling. I'm doing the journaling right now and doing it the same as I always do with the pencil first and then I go back over it with a pen. Once the journaling is written and I'm happy with that and I've got all the pencil lines erased, I'm gonna go and adhere the rest of the flowers, the other ladybug, and that adorable little worm. Then the fun part comes. I take the um, banner that I've been saving for last and I'll pull out my, uh, I think it's the Itty Bitty stamp set from Close to My Heart. It's an alphabet stamp set. And I use that to stamp Snug as a Bug onto the blue banner. And then that will be adhered to the top of the page with some foam squares as well. So I just finished the journaling. I added my uh, lines with my pen. Here I'm gluing all the little pieces back down again to the layout base. My Tombow Mono Glue is really um, a lifesaver. I absolutely love using it for intricate cuts, well in gluing really, and putting all those little pieces together. It's too, it has two uh, tips on it. There's a fine point tip and then there's a thicker tip on the opposite end of it for bigger jobs that you need it to do. I have not used the thick end yet. One day I may need to use it but so far just using the fine tip pen has been sufficient enough for me. Another little tip I have when I'm stamping especially with tiny tiny alphas like this stamp set I have such a hard time seeing on my stamping block the little line to keep your letters straight so I take a scrap piece of white cardstock put my stamp over top of that like the block and then put the either the phrase or the letters whatever it is that I'm doing onto the stamp then so that I can see that little line. Otherwise, I don't know, it just seems to blend in. It's really hard to see. So I've just um, found this really helpful and implement it honestly anytime I stamp because I, like I like utilizing those little lines to keep my stamping straight and stuff. And of course, stamping with alphas is somewhat time consuming. Luckily it was a short phrase <laughs> and of course this video is sped up so it doesn't take all that long but in real life it's it's a labor of love. There's that little banner attached to the top. When I get to the end of this video, well actually my creative process, I pulled out some black enamel dots from close to my heart and I'm going to embellish with those. I just about forgot to let you know about the shimmer brush. <laughs> I pulled out my red close to my heart shimmer brush and just filled in all the hearts on the ladybugs with a little bit of sparkle. And that, my friends, brings me to the end of this process video. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope to see you here again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and a like. I would really appreciate that. Helps me to know that people are seeing it and they like my artwork. And also if you stick around to the very end of the video, I do have some close-ups and other pictures of this layout as well. If you want to use this layout in your own crafting, I'll include the um, design space link at the bottom of this video. <clears throat> so you can check that out as well. It's free to you free for you to use, but please only use it for your personal scrapbooking. I really appreciate everybody that drops in and I hope you enjoyed this video. And once again, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks guys. I'll see you again soon. Bye.